So this is how I came up with the original numbers. I just took the stakes I cut, clamped some boards across them, and took some measurements. That gave me the rough numbers to do a dry fit. So I took those numbers and I transferred them to the horizontal rails. And I apologize, I'm bouncing back and forth between the front and back short pieces and the side uh, real long pieces. I, it's just kind of how the filming came out. So now that I know where the vertical stakes go, now I can lay the cross piece on the stakes using my tick mark to align it left to right. I clamp each of the six joints together with no glue and then carry it over to the trailer and do a test fit. And I'll be honest, the test fitting process, I went back and forth three or four times until I got it to fit right. Once I got the side piece figured out with the numbers, then when I made the second one, all I had to do was line it up with a tape measure. So here you can see me, I've got my final dry fit done. I'm happy with it. There are certain edges that once the boards are glued together, you won't be able to get a router in there. So I routered all the edges except that one spot where it crisscrosses the vertical piece. I'm doing it one at a time because I have my dry fit piece behind me. It's in perfect geometry. And so what I was doing is I took the board off, I routed it here, and then I put it back and I glued it in place. Then I took the next one off, routed it, put it back and glued it. And in true gluing fashion, I'm smothering the joints in glue. Likewise, smothering the other, the other mating joint as well. Need a lot of glue to get a good bond. I mean, I want this fence to look nice, but really I want it to be strong. You can't achieve strength unless you glue the heck out of it. So that's what I'm doing. Now I'm using those tick marks to align it with these vertical stakes again, putting it right back where it belongs. And if you're tempted to only use one clamp, don't do that. Do at least two clamps, two clamps on each joint, and then I've got a giant clamp on the top where I can just get away with one. And as I'm wiping, I'm also inspecting each joint, and in a couple spots I did actually end up adding an extra clamp, so. So now that this piece has had a full day for the glue to cure, power sanding with 80 grit sandpaper, then I'm routering all the edges. Then I come back with a sanding sponge to kind of get in the tight corners and stuff. So here on this side, you can see the pre-routered edges. You can see how they, I wouldn't be able to take the router joint all the way up to the vertical stake. So on this side, all I have to router is the vertical stakes, the horizontals that I already did before I glued.
not only am I power sanding it, but I'm also using a sanding sponge to kind of get uh, in the crevices and the tough to reach places. And like I said, it really gives you a chance to inspect your piece in great detail, looking for any missed glue or you messed up the router bit a little bit in that area. You really get it kind of as perfect as you can. So here is the end result of four days of working on this project. This was the end of day four. I have all the pieces glued, sanded, and ready for the next step. I'm going to put dowels through each of the joints to even make these joints even stronger. So that will be next week's video. Gotta build a jig, gotta pound them in. Thanks for watching.